Today I'm going to be showing you a video on the Kawasaki Prairie 400. There's a couple common issues I'm going to show you on this model. I'm going to show you how to service it. We've done other videos on how to adjust valves, how to clean carburetors, uh, just several other videos, how to remove fenders, stuff like that. So check those videos out on our other on our channel. Uh, but right now I'm going to just show you a quick overview of the four wheeler. This four wheeler here is a an automatic. You've got a shift lever there on the right hand side. You've got low, which is clear up top there. You've got high, which is the next one. And then you've got neutral and reverse. It should say on there, um, maybe your tag came off, but it'll say push button, no push button, push button. What that means is when you go to put it in these gears, you're going to have to push this button on the top of the shifter there. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're just trying to shove it forward, a lot of times it won't go. So you're gonna have to push that button in there. Just kind of a safety deal so you're not going from low to high or from um, from high to reverse uh, without, without the four-wheeler being stopped and without you thinking about it. So uh, something to keep in mind. This is the, the belt cover here. You've got a handful of 10 millimeter bolts all the way around there. We've done a separate video on how to uh, replace that belt, how to get to that, how to rebuild those clutches, so check that out. But this is your belt cover here. You've got a rear brake a rear brake pedal down here on your right hand side. That uh, runs a cable to your back end. We'll go over that in a separate part of the video. Um, but that is uh, your rear brakes there, controls your rear brakes. Going around to your front there, you've got um, hydraulic brakes going to the front wheels of this machine. There's a caliper on each side, so those pads will need replaced uh, periodically, so make sure you check those. I like to check those about every time I service it. Um, once the four-wheeler gets to be a little bit older, that way you know those are uh, good. You're not, you're not going to wear out your discs by running metal to metal. Uh, these are a 12-inch tire on this machine on the front. And so those are a fairly common tire and uh, the back has got a 10 inch. And so just, they aren't the, they aren't the same size, so keep that in mind. This <clears throat> rack system on these prairies are kind of a two piece system. They've got uh, your fiberglass or your plastic rack uh, on top here. And then underneath you've got an aluminum rack. And uh, these, if you uh, roll your four wheeler, it gets damaged in the front or the back end. What unfortunately happens a lot of times is you'll crack up your top cover here you'll also bend this aluminum piece so it's a two-piece uh, which is unfortunate but it also has its advantages you've got a lot of mounting bolts right here that are that are going to be uh, great mounting spots because there is some extra strength there besides mounting it on top of this plastic um, you've got mounting brackets or mounting tabs up front some in the middle some in the back here of the rack so You've got your two headlights here. I'll show you how to control those up at the handlebars, but you've got high and low beam, and they are just a single bulb in, in each one of those. Uh, this is, a, again, a four-wheel drive model, so you've got your uh, front drive shafts up there, your CV shafts, your front axles, some people call them. Uh, they've got your uh, CV boots on there. You wanna check those every time. If there's any sort of a rip at all in these boots, one boot right there, Another boot uh, kind of behind that plastic cover. You want to make sure you replace those uh, immediately when you see those rips. See if there's grease that's coming out of those. Get those replaced right away. Otherwise, you're going to be replacing that entire axle or at least that joint in that boot. So cheaper to get that done uh, right away. I've got a nice front bumper here. Protects your radiator. This is liquid cooled. <clears throat> so it's got a radiator in behind here. So you've got this mesh grill there's you know some larger holes here and behind that uh is enough you got a smaller screen there that will protect your radiator behind the the springs there is your tie rods on either side you'll have a tie rod and you can tell there you can see this four wheeler's partially been taken apart so we're actually doing a uh, rebuild on this one and so that's why we've got brackets like this that are not attached. But um, behind the spring there is your tie rods. You want to make sure that your wheels are adjusted properly. We've done a separate video on how to adjust your tie rods uh, the correct way. So check that video out 
on our channel, uh, but that is where you find your tie rods. You've got a locking uh, screw or locking nut on either side of your tie rods there. You'll have to loosen both those up to adjust that. On your left-hand side here, we've got a cover that runs across here. It's actually an air duct. Hooks into your the bottom end of your uh, crankcase in the back there, but it runs up here to snorkel for the, for the four-wheeler. Uh, but here is your fuel on-off. You've got three different positions there. This knob has been removed, uh, but you've got on, reserve, and off. So uh, horizontal there is gonna, going to be off. If you're doing any kind of carb work at all, you want to turn that fuel off. If your four-wheeler four is sitting for a while, you want to make sure you turn that fuel off or if you're trailering it somewhere, turn it off. That way your float doesn't stick. You don't dump all your fuel down into your cylinder. Uh, on this side is your recoil pull starter, which has obviously been removed, but it sits right here. Just kind of a nice backup in case that battery fails. Also on this side, you've got your coolant reservoir there. That's your overflow. So you also have a uh, coolant fill up front on your radiator, but you've got your overflow tank here. And you can see there that there's a notch out of this plastic here. And that is uh, so you can see this reservoir and see where you're at for height. There's a, a minimum and a maximum on, in that tank. You want to make sure you keep some coolant in there. Uh, I didn't cover up front there on your radiator. On the left-hand side there is your uh, coolant fill plug there. Make sure you do not pull that plug when that uh, radiator is hot. Also on the front end here, and I'll just go over this while we're on this left-hand side. Left-hand side is going to be really hard to see in a video. I think I've done other videos uh, with a closer view, but on the left-hand side of this front differential is your uh, fill plug to fill your front differential. Also it's on the bottom of that differential, I'm not going to be able to get that camera down there to, to, to show you exactly where it's at, but it's right on the left-hand side of your differential, and there's a slot cut out from that skid plate that'll allow you to drain that oil in the front differential. It does take a little while because that uh, oil is an 80 weight 90 or it should be an 80 weight 90 oil and it's just a slow draining oil. So, and then on the, again, on the left hand side of that differential, you've got your fill plug. You fill all the way up to the bottom of that fill plug uh, when you're going back together. So I will leave in the comments below or leave in the uh, details below what kind of oil I would recommend for this four-wheeler. You've got your engine oil here and it holds 3.4 liters and it, it'll a lot of times tell you right on this side cover how much it holds, but that's what it is. I would replace your oil filter every time you service it. That is on the front of your motor right here and you can, uh, I guess you won't be able to see it there, but your prop shaft going to your front differential is right there with that boot and then right behind that is your oil filter. So change that every time you service your machine and I've got those products if you're needing those. Also on this side is your carburetor and I've done several videos on the carburetor on this machine. So if you need to do any kind of carb work at all, uh, you'll, you'll want to remove your seat, remove your fuel tank cover, remove your fuel tank, and your carburetor sits underneath of there. This snorkel runs across here, so you actually won't hardly be able to see your carburetor, if at all, when this snorkel is on there. Uh, but you will be able to adjust your idle, which is here, and you can a lot of times just do that with your hands. You don't need any sort of tool to do that. If you turn it clockwise, you'll turn that idle up counterclockwise down. And I've explained that in detail on these carb repair videos. Up front here on this machine is your VIN number. It's gonna be uh, right between your uh, AR mounts on your the front left-hand side of this machine. So you're not gonna be able to see it now because of lighting, but uh, right on the bottom rail of this frame, right in between those AR mounts is where you're gonna find your VIN number. So. Back tires on this machine are a 25-12-10, so it's a 10-inch rim on this machine. Behind here is a common problem, and this is a rear differential, and I've, again, done a video on uh, replacing gears on these rear ends uh, because this is a common problem, but you've got your solid axle running through here, and you've got a lot of times what happens is these seals start leaking, you'll run low on oil that or bearings will just over time uh, 
get shot and uh, so your differential will need rebuilt. So again, that's a common problem. Toolbox in the back here it has got typically has two rubber flaps that will uh, hold this lid shut. They've got metal mounts up top here. You've got your tail light there. On the back end here, you've got a uh, ball mount. So you've got a, uh, an area to mount a ball for pulling trailers, stuff like that in the back. On your left hand, or you, excuse me, your right hand side is your rear brake housing. You've got one cable that runs all the way up to the left hand side of your uh, machine, or left hand handlebars, and the, the right hand cable will run to your rear brake pedal that's on your right side of your four wheeler. So you've got wing nuts here to adjust these brakes. You wanna make sure that you uh, don't over tighten those. You wanna make sure that those are both about the same and there's a little bit of free play in here. You wanna make sure that your brakes aren't constantly engaged and otherwise you're gonna wear shoes out like crazy. Um, so you wanna back these off if they're too tight, if you're constantly engaging your brakes, back these nuts off so that those brakes aren't engaged. Underneath this housing here, you'll see your your another brake drum. This is actually just a brake drum cover. Then you've got a brake drum and then your shoes are on the inside there. So if you need to replace those, uh, that is where uh, those shoes are. Right here on this rear brake, drum the panel here you've got an indicator of where your brakes are at where your shoes are at so you're not having to pull that cover just to check your brake shoes this indicator if it's positioned properly will give you an idea where your brake shoes are at those brake shoes are very inexpensive and i suggest replacing those periodically you don't want that metal on metal those that brake drum is extremely expensive uh, so you want to make sure you replace those shoes before they're wearing up top here on your differential is your speedometer gear uh, that runs into your differential it will tell your sp your speed of your four wheeler. And so a lot of times what happens is these will um, wear out or there'll be a leak here. You'll be dumping oil out of this port here. So you wanna inspect those, make sure that's installed correctly, make sure it's functioning great. I like to pull this speedometer gear here periodically just to inspect it because I don't want a rear differential to fail just because I failed to uh, inspect that gear and inspect those bushings. Your rear differential here, you've got a fill plug. It's gonna be the same way as the front. You fill your oil up to the bottom of this plug here. Does not take very much oil. Again, you've got a 10 millimeter uh, drain plug on the bottom of this differential to drain that oil. I like to remove this skid. I believe there is an area cut out on this skid plate to uh, drain the oil, but I like to remove it. Otherwise you fill this entire skid plate up with oil and it's gonna just attract dirt, cause issues. So I just pull that different, or that, yeah, that skid plate um, just to get that out of the way there, clean that up. Same, same way on this side, you've actually got a drain plug here. If you've got, if you think that you have water in your rear drum housing, you can pull this drain plug here and there's a cutout. Um, but it's good to do that periodically, especially if you've gone through water and sense that there might be some uh, water in there. I like to do it before winter because if you uh, leave water in that housing while your four-wheeler sits for the winter, it freezes, uh, you will have issues come spring. Exhaust pipe is on your right-hand side on these four-wheelers. One thing you'll notice here, you'll see some tire wear marks. If you put a larger, aggressive, more aggressive tire on these four wheelers, it will wear into your exhaust. You just wanna be careful that you're not wearing too much. Any sort of rubbing at all on this exhaust pipe will eventually cause issues. You'll wear a hole through there. So keep that in mind. You don't want those tires wearing on there. Going up and I'm gonna hop on this lift here and I'll show you a couple things. But before I do that, I like to pull the seat. This is kind of a two handed job. So I've actually already unhooked the seat but you take and pull this uh, cable here, which is back by your rear storage box. So take and pull that straight out. That'll unlatch your seat there, and you're able to lift that up. Again, that's kind of a two-handed job, uh, so keep that in mind. Going up here is your battery underneath of your seat. You've also got your starter relay. You've got your CDI box. You've got your main fuse here. 
So a common problem on these, again, is a CDI box. If you don't have spark on your four-wheeler, I check a couple things, but uh, I'd check several things, and we'll do a couple videos on electrical components on this machine. Um, but a lot of times, unfortunately, your CDI box fails, and there's no way to test the CDI box. You gotta test everything else. So make sure your battery is good and charged. I like to keep a trickle charger on my batteries. And this pad actually is supposed to sit underneath of there. This battery isn't hooked up quite right. Again, we've started pulling parts on this machine to rebuild it. So you've got a fuel level gauge right here. It's right in front of the fuel gas cap. So a lot of times what happens is these screens will become extremely discolored or weathered and will crack out. If it does crack out, you do want to make sure that you fill that plug up or fill that cover, cover that up with something so that water isn't getting down into your fuel tank. You got your vent line here. You want to make sure that you've got some sort of a hose on here that will keep water from dumping in, but also make sure the line's free and clear so that uh, your fuel tank can vent. On your right hand side here is your thumb throttle and that will snap back when you push that. It should snap back if, if it doesn't, you've got issues. And then you've got your throttle cable that runs down here, runs directly to your carburetor. You've got your hydraulic brakes here. You've got your master cylinder with your reservoir here. I like hydraulic brakes, especially on the front. Uh, you just wanna make sure that you check your level uh, through this sight window here. You've got two Phillips screws that are a lot of times difficult to pull out of there. Uh, just make sure you have got a good screwdriver, make sure it's seated properly. Dot three or dot four brake fluid on there. On the left hand side here, you've got your, your start button, you've got your lights, you've got off, low, high for your switch there. Down below here, you've got your engine run and shut off. Here, this is just kind of a quick shut off deal. There, you do want to make sure that you've got that in the run position or your four wheeler isn't going to start. Underneath there, you've got your override button. Kind of some confusion on the override button. What this does is allow you to go faster in reverse. There's gonna be a limiter in reverse unless you hit this button. You do have to push and hold on that button every time you go in reverse if you're wanting to go faster than a limited speed. So that's just something so somebody doesn't hop on there, hit the reverse lever or the, uh, the, hit the throttle lever and you go 60 mile an hour in reverse. That limiter will uh, stop you from doing that, but you want to make sure that you push this if you're wanting to go faster. On the left hand side here, you've got your parking brake. What you do here, pull this in, and then you just set this parking brake uh, to wherever you want it at, wherever it, wherever it's going to hold the four wheeler. And to remove that, this is spring loaded. So just pull that brake lever in. This should snap out sometimes as they get older. It won't snap back out. You can see there, there's some wiggle and you've got some adjustment there. This is what the, the parking brake looks like here. You've got a brake light sensor there. This is the parking brake part of it here. It should snag right here on these teeth onto that post and you can uh, engage and release that parking brake lever there. These cables will run down to the rear of the four-wheeler. I showed you those cables in the back end there. Um, the, that, so that's a very long cable. It does tend to stick over time and you start having issues with that cable. Because it is so long, there's so many different areas, it can fray, cause issues, or get just gummed up. Here is an outlet here to run um, some sort of a power. If you've got a spotlight, cell phone charger, stuff like that, you've got that power option there. Ignition switch is gonna be on the right-hand side, right above the shift shifter there. You turn it on, should kick that uh, speedometer on. You've got your indicator lights here. Four-wheeler will not start unless you're your neutral light is on, so keep that in mind. You've got reverse here when you shift it on the right-hand side there to reverse, that light will kick on. Uh, if you don't, well, I'll show you where those sensors are. I believe I have a video on uh, that bottom end um, to diagnose if that, if that light isn't coming on, potentially it is your sensor. These bulbs, uh, more than likely, if you, these lights aren't coming on, uh, it's a sensor issue, not a bulb issue but they are at bulbs, so they do periodically go out. You've got your time on here, you get your odometer, hit your mode button, you'll get to a couple different trips, and then you've got your hour meter. Over here you can set your time, reset your trips, stuff like that. Start button, again, is over here. Power on, make sure your switch is in the run position. Hit your starter button there until the four-wheeler starts. Air box is here. 
and four clips to open this up. You wanna make sure you check that air filter at least every time you are servicing your four-wheeler. It is uh, very essential that that filter is clean and in good condition. This was a complete overview of the Kawasaki Prairie 400 four-wheel drive. This is automatic. They do make this in the two-wheel drive and uh, the, diff the major difference there is the front differential, the, actually just the front end in general. You got different A-arms, different shocks, different hubs, and uh, prop shaft obviously going up to that front end. So this is, uh, this is the four-wheel drive model. If you've got questions on this four-wheeler, we'll have this four-wheeler in the shop for some time as we rebuild it. We'll go through it and do other videos on this machine. If you've got questions or comments on it, make sure you leave those below. And if you've, this video has been helpful, please subscribe to our channel, like the video, please share it with anybody that will find it helpful. Thanks for watching.